everyone, this is Brittany Vaughn and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to share a very juicy, <laughs> full of ups and downs and adventure story of the play party that we just hosted this last weekend, like two days ago. And first I invite you to take a deep breath with me. <sighs> so... If you know me, you know that I have been organizing play parties on Koh Phangan, a small island in Thailand, for the last um, almost two years now. And I was very excited to... Last last fall, I came out here and did a play party um, um, in September with Fair Day. Uh, we weren't dating at the time, but it was like he had come to my play party in April of that year and then wanted to... Uh, make one here in Berlin we made one together we rented a yoga shala and had over 60 people and it was big and vibey and amazing and I w was very excited to come back and start doing them again this summer so we came to Berlin and like you know I've been to Berlin before but this is the first time coming here where I'm like okay I'm going to live here in Berlin like in the past I'd come for a couple weeks or a month um, but this is the first time where I'm like this is my home base. Love of my life is a Berliner. And um, he has a house here. And like, you know, he's based in Berlin for the last 10 years. And so our plan is to spend the summers in Berlin and the winters in Thailand, which is amazing. I'm very grateful for my life. Uh, but it's just a different, it's like a different vibe to, to realize. It's like a different feeling to come here and be like, okay, this is my home now for the summer um, and like to build my network, my community, my friends, um, versus like coming here with like my group of friends or having an event I was hosting or going to, um, and then popping in and out, you know, but I'm very excited to build that. And this, I wanted one of the first events to be the play party. So when I was here last fall, when I was organizing, uh, the play party, I, it was really hard to find a location. We ended up like finding a location the day before. And like some people even canceled their ticket because they were coming from out of town and they weren't sure if we even had a location. Um, and when I was going around to all the locations last fall, they were like, okay, you need to send an email. So I thought this must be some like, you know, German bureaucracy thing where like everyone, like I would go to them in person and they would be like, oh no, please send an email. And I wasn't sure if they were just trying to get rid of me or if this was just like a German thing where everyone wanted everything down on paper. So this time around, I sent tons of emails. Like we were in Munich two weeks before we came to Berlin and I sent tons of emails and was like just reaching out to everyone because I thought this is the way it works in Germany. Most people didn't reply. If they did reply, it was because they were like, we already booked out for the whole summer. Like they were like, you can look at dates in like 2024. And I'm like, oh my goodness, we are not in Thailand anymore. Like Thailand is so flowy and feels like in some ways Berlin even though it's Berlin is still very German like very structured you know I honor that I respect that but I'm like I, I'm trying to find a location right so people you know I've been building the buzz like to letting people know yeah we're gonna do one as soon as we find a location and like so people are interested they're reaching out they're asking I'm super excited to host one and so I Finally, one day I just woke up and I was like, I'm going to get on my bicycle and I'm going to go and I'm going to find us a location. And I just was like, I'm manifesting that by the end of today, we have a location for the party, play party. This happens to be a day that is very stormy here. Like the weather has been like super warm and then super cold. Um, and this was a day where it was like a high of like 16 degrees but it really felt like 12 or 13 degrees and it was like cloudy and overcast and like raining and I'm like bicycling and it was very dramatic and I sometimes I'm like why do I make my life so dramatic uh, but I went to all these places I had like marked down yoga stu studios and different loft spaces and I just went there and they were like oh please send an email and I'm like I have already sent an email <laughs> like I'm here and no one res has responded and then um a bunch of them were like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, let me check the dates, like, let's see. And there was a couple of places that were like, maybe. And then one yoga studio that uh, Ferdy uh, organized a bunch of meetups there in the past, and they knew him. 
I went there and I was like, yeah, I've sent an email. We've messaged on Instagram and like no one's responding. And they were like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, we're not really sure why no one's responding. But yeah, we have a date for the play party. Like you can host a, the, event, the event here in like a week and a half. And the next day after that that we have available is in like July or something. Like it was far, way farther away. And I was like, no, May 27, that sounds great. Let's do it. Um, you know, we have like 10 days that we can get everyone together. I was like fully confident that everything's working out perfectly. And it's all aligned. I went home till Friday. I was like, we're doing the play party. It's happening. I found the location. We announced it. I got, got all the buzz going and started reaching out to a bunch of people here and what we realized was like a lot of our community like the ones that the, the community that Faraday has built and the people that I know a lot of them are not in Berlin yet like they are in Thailand still or you know we brought them out to Asia and they're just exploring around Asia or they're just in different parts of Europe that are more warm and they're like oh yeah I'm coming in July or this and that another thing I didn't realize is this is um, a holiday weekend in Berlin. So like well, most people who have nine to five jobs, they have Monday off. And also it's carnival. So it's like Lund it's like Berlin carnival, which is a huge thing here. And so basically people were like super busy this weekend. And a lot of people were even like, it's a, one of the first sunny, warm, all, all weekend. So a lot of people are out camping, like lots of things happening. Uh, like Berlin is already a playground where there's tons of people so many people were like I can come and then some people were like I can't come anymore and I was just like it's happening I'm manifesting we had like 45 people sign up and I was like in the last 24 hours usually we have like 15 more people come because people hear about it they spread the word like word of the mouth so I was just like I trust I trust in the universe I trust it's happening and then Saturday morning, the day of the play party happens, and I wake up, and I'm not joking, like, we had, like, 20 or 30 people cancel. <laughs> and um, so I'm sitting there, and we have, like, a little, like, 33 people who have confirmed and are for sure coming and paid and everything. And I'm sitting in my apartment, and um, we have a lot of people on the waiting list, and some people I put on the waiting list because we want to make sure we have a good ratio of, like, men and women. And so there's like a lot of guys because, you know, we always want to make sure that we have even numbers or sometimes more women so that it's just like a safe, vibey environment. Because, yeah, if you have like a lot of men, it's like it's a different energy, like like more men than women. It's like a very different energy in this space. Um, so we had a lot of people on the waiting list, but also some of these people were people where I was like, I wasn't sure about their vibe. And for me, I really wanted to hold to the standard of every single person that's coming is someone that is like safe and they're on the vibration that of what we're creating and they're just like sexy people you know um so I'm really proud of myself because there was people I could have said yes to that just like for whatever reason didn't match the vibe of what we wanted to create um and so I was like no we're holding to our standards I'm not going to just have more people come just because we want to fill space so said no to that and let and I'm going to be real with you that there was like a lot of like freaking out and like crying because I was just like what is happening in the universe I'm like and I was feeling like really emotional this weekend um and I was just like I don't know what to do because on Copenhagen like I've built my community there for over three years and everyone knows me and I've been doing the play parties for almost two years now and like it's like an established thing you know like people are like people who come into town they like to send people my way you know like they're like oh yeah you have to go to Britney's play party this is amazing so this is like a thing you need to do while you're on Copenhagen <clears throat> and here in Berlin like I'm I'm new on the scene you know and so and I, I guess I just didn't realize like how many people came last time through Faraday's network and those people are like I was saying are just not in the city yet so I yeah I just kind of like I was sitting there on the couch in our house and I was like I kind of feel like a failure like I was just like you know I always fo follow my excitement I always follow like all the signs that the universe is sending and also I always have a ton of people at my events like I've hosted so many events throughout the years like hundreds and hundreds of events like parties festivals play parties of, like every type of event you can imagine <clears throat> and the thing that people always know about my events is they're always amazing people and there's always a ton of people like I always have a lot of people on the waiting list if it's like I can only have a set number because 
people can people trust the vibe of the party that I'm making and know they know it's a safe space and they know they're gonna have fun and I'm sitting here and I'm like like where are the people (laughs) and also like what do I do now because we uh, had you know reserved this um, yoga shala and it's very big and I didn't want to have like a small amount of people for such a big space also to create the vibe and then at the same time it was like this huge rental fee whereas like all my play parties on Thailand are in my villa my community space which is also a three bedroom like vibey villa Um, three bedroom three bathroom like really nice villa so I'm not really used to like paying a rental fee also and so I'm just like at this point like what I don't like I don't know what to do and I'm like and also we were gonna have to like rent a van put all of these mattresses all these things and bring them to the yoga shala rent the van for all day bring and we had like clean up the yoga shala at 2 a.m and put all the mattresses back in the van and bring them back to our house and Faraday was like, this is like, this is like not, this is like a fuck no. Like, I do not want to do all of this for just 30, pe- 33 people, you know? Like, it's just, it's not worth, it's the cost gain ratio is not balancing out. Like, it's not worth the effort. And, um, and I was like, okay, so the options are <laughs> we cancel the event, we postpone the event, or I was like, sitting on my couch like looking around our house and we have like we have a one bedroom like loft space um which is in the heart of the city and like Faraday owns it it's like it's on it's on the roof that's on the top floor and I was just looking around and I was like or babe we can host it here like what do you think about us hosting a play party in our house and he was like um well I've done like like he's done like um organic like flowy type of things where we had like 20 or 30 people and people were flowing having a nice time but it wasn't ever like a structured facilitated play party and he was like I don't know like I don't know these people like they're not like my inner crew and like I just want to make sure everyone like honors the space and respects it and I was like I have vetted all these people I fully believe that they're all amazing vibey people even if I haven't met them in real life like they've all gone through the application process and I really trust them like I trust the people who are coming and he was like okay if you trust the people then let's try it let's like follow the universal flow and see what happens and we'll know by the end of the night if this is something we ever want to do again or if this was like we tried it once you know and so I had to send like this really like it was really hard for me to send this message to the yoga studio because I have an event space. I know what it's like once people cancel on me. Um, and so I had to like send this message to them and saying, I'm really sorry. Like we're going to have to cancel us the rental for today and we're happy to pay a cancellation fee, like all that stuff. But just being like really real with them of what the situation was. And then sending out a message to everyone being like, actually, we are changing the event venue today and we're moving it to our house. <laughs> so here's our address and see you guys later. So then we, the one thing that I really love is like, I have my soul family, like my, we call it star family, like our alien brothers, sisters, like I have Faraday and then Carl and Eve, who are just these amazing people that I consider like my little brother and sister. And the four of us have such a good time together. Like they are the ones who um, live in our community space on the island and this this winter all four of us are going to live in the remote collective or my community space on in Copenhagen together and host events together and like when the four of us are together we like we are a family and we have so much fun that like we had a little family meeting we all like I told them like we're going to do it in our house and they're like we fully support you like whatever you guys need and no matter what we're all going to have such a good time because we're going to be together and I'm so grateful for them and I'm so grateful that they like came and they were, they like rallied with us and sent like shared such positive energy, like at different moments throughout the day and always, but like, especially on Saturday when I was having a little freak out and trying to figure out what to do. Um, so the four of us like got the whole space together. We spent an hour just like creating such a vibe and Faraday has bought like tons of mattresses already for the play party last fall. So we had like you know four or five mattresses like throughout the space and um a huge like bean bag bed thing and uh Faraday had bought like tons of food and we had you know massage oil and lube and like ropes for shabari and um and like the bathtub like we put like bath salts in the bathtub candles everywhere 
and just got the space like energetically and physically ready to host people. <laughs> and we're just there like, we hope this works out. Like, we don't know how this is going to go. And it was mostly like, you know, do we like the people? Do we like the vibe? And how is it? We had never had that many people in our space for a party. Um, so everyone starts showing up. Uh, we had people come between 6 and 6.30. And as people were arriving, you know, they were like, Eve would check them in and check their name at the door and have them come in. They would like get ready. And I was like giving everyone a hug when they came in. Like, so great to see you. Nice to meet you. And like, as they started coming in, I was like, wow, these are really sexy people. Like I was like vibing with everyone. And um, just, I would, I could feel the vibration of everyone as they were coming in to the space. They were just like, a little nervous, excited, but just like ready to play and ready to flow and ready to vibe, you know, like have a good experience. Um, so they were all adding their energy into the space. And I was just thinking like, what if this is like the universe? Cause you know, I believe in like, they call it green light, red light synchronicity, where if something's um, not working out, it's like a red light synchronicity. It's like, no, don't go this direction. And then if something works out over here and it just keeps flowing in that direction, then that's a green light synchronicity. And I was like, wow, maybe I was getting all these red light synchronicities because maybe our home is the perfect location to host the play parties. We don't have to pay rent. It's already a vibey location. And, you know, we can really hold to our standard of we want like 30 to 35 people who are like on this vibration of, you know, mature, um, ready to flow, sexy, and just nice, open-hearted people ready to connect from a heart, from heart to heart, you know? And if it, you know, if we don't get those amount of people or whatever, then we can cancel the event because it's like we didn't pay this rental fee or we can just have less people because it's like, oh, it's in our house, you know? But I was like, let's see how this goes. Like the whole time I was just like, I don't know how this is going to go. Um, but so everyone comes and then we start, we start the intro round and I, I always do like just kind of sharing like why I started the play parties like you know that I grew up in a cult I got married at 18 as a virgin and like have always been like really suppressed in my sexuality growing up and I wanted to create a safe space for myself and for others to play and to express ourselves in our sexuality and to heal I really believe that you can heal through pleasure um because you can go to all the therapy in the world but you have to like eventually go out and you know, do something in the 3D in order to change the wiring in your brain. And when you can uh, drop into safe spaces where you can give and receive pleasure in a safe way, in a way that feels really good for your body and your body trusts, like from a somatic experiencing standpoint, which means like the sensations in your body, like how your, ac your body actually responds. If you can create situations where it's safe and your body can open up, and it can feel safe to give and receive pleasure, then you're actually rewiring how your body responds to situations and you're rewiring the programming in your brain that like it's okay to give and receive pleasure. And for me, so I always oh, share this in the intro round and I share with everyone like, just I was just super real with people. I was like, this is what happened. Like people canceled, it's a busy weekend and and we had this moment where we were like, should we allow people to come into our house? Like for us, our house is like, uh, it's like our safe haven. It's our protected space, like where we really put our energy and we put a lot of effort into making it like this really vibey, sexy space for ourselves and our friends. But we we're like, can we invite people we don't know? And so I was telling them, like, I just want you to know that like all of you guys have been really like vetted and... Um, we had to like sit down and have a conversation and like go over the list. Like, do we trust these people in our home with all our things? And, and we said, yes. And we we're so happy for all of you guys to be here, but just know it's like really special. And we don't know if we'll ever do this again, but like, we'll always remember this night when we, you know, ended up hosting one in our house. And so I could just see people were dropping in and like, um, and then we did, you know, I just explained like the boundaries of the play party, that there's no penile penetration, but what does that mean? And that, you know, like watching is also honoring if you're like doing it, watching is also participating if you're doing it with the energy of like honoring the experience and, and also to always honor your body. Like if it's not a fuck yes, then it's a no and any moment you can change, but just allow your body to like drop in and like flow with the experience and to really drop all expectations. Because when you do that, then, then like the experience already happens. Like the experience is just allowing yourself to be in this space and to have it be okay that you're in the space and 
to allow yourself to connect to whatever is unfolding that feels good in your body. Um, so just explaining all of that and like, and also that it's like a gender fluid space. Like, you know, like if you want to try being with someone of the same gender or opposite gender, like whatever you're wanting to explore and grow in. And this is like a safe space to test all those things out. And also to like try different things, like try Shibari, try like a little bit of kink, try being more sensual, you know, take a bath with someone. Like, like we have like all these different rooms or we were explaining that Freddie and I were learning a lot of like ta tantra massage and like, like I was just explaining how like Freddie um, gives me like yoni massages all the time and they're like so nice and they're so, it's so beautiful to focus on the female pleasure because so much of our society is programmed and dominated by the male orgasm and like this is what porn is and like, but so we can rewire our programming for especially as women that it's okay to receive pleasure without needing to give anything back and just allow our bodies to actually open up to that. Um, so just like opening people up to all of this. And then we did an intro round where everyone got to like ex say their name and how, how they were showing up, like how, th how they were feeling, allowed them to drop into the experience, put their energy into the space. And then um, Faraday and Eve um, did some uh, connection games where people um, were sharing like, like their boundaries and um, desire. So like, so I'll just give you an example of some of the games. Like, um, they had people like break off into groups. The first one was just like how letting people drop in. So they had people break off into groups of, I think two or three and like share their programming around sexuality. And like, what does, what does good sex mean to them? And like, what do they like currently, you know, and what would they like to grow in? And it was funny cause you could feel people were a little bit nervous. Like, am I allowed to just speak this? And then, and then we couldn't get people to stop talking cause they were just so excited to have a safe space to like open up about, uh, what it, what their desires are around their sexuality and what they would love and then and then we had games where we were practicing our sacred no is what we call it and so like um like we would go up to they would have people go up to people and say like can I can I touch you and everyone every single person it's like we were like even if you want to say yes you say no so everyone was just practicing going around, can I touch you? Can I offer you this? And the people were just saying, no, 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 no. And just practicing their no. And then we're flipping it and, you know, offering to say, like, can, do you, maybe you, maybe it's a no, but you want to do something else. So then without anyone actually acting on anything, it's like they were practicing, like, um, can I give you a massage? It's like, no, but you can give me a hug. And then p if people wanted to, they could give each other a hug. And then, and then also practicing their yes, like, um, without again without acting on it they were just like can i can i give you a massage i was like yes and then just like keep practicing so it's like offering these opportunities for verbal yes and no's or no but i would i'm off open to this or yes yes and i would also like this um so that was really fun and then we did a, a circle game where like people could step into the circle if they wanted to you know we had women it's like women if you want to play with other men tonight step in and like women stepped in it's like women if you're open to playing with other women step in and they would step in we actually had like all the women step in so I was like oh wow today's gonna be juicy and then we had like men if you want to play with other women step in and then they stepped in and then like men if you're open to playing with other men in, and then we had like you know ranges of this like if you just want to cuddle or like you know you know, sensual touch, caring touch, and then people would step in. If you want to do more, like step in. So creating that communication within the group and allowing everyone to see like what was going on and who was open to what. And then we had a part where the couples, if you're in a coupleship and you're with your partner tonight, step into the circle and then like, do we want to speak our boundaries? And like Faraday and I, I mean, this is a whole thing because this is the first time that I was allowing myself to play in a play party um, because I've hosted, play we had one play party in Copenhagen when Faraday and I were still together, like after we had gotten together. Um, and there wasn't anyone at that play party that I wanted to connect with, but Faraday connected with like many women. So it was kind of this pain point that we have carried in our relationship since then. This was like six months ago. Um, because he has played with other people since we've gotten together and, you know, been able to go out and have that experience and then come back and be like, I choose you 
you know, these people are just making me appreciate you more. And I was just like, I haven't, you know, played with anyone. And some of this was also my programming too. Like one, there wasn't men at that event, but it's like, you know, it's not like we're locked in. Like I could, I think this was just like a lot of my programming has been monogamy and there's a lot of like fear that I didn't realize I was carrying about, you know, even though we're chosen and free and we say we're open, it's like, there's a, it's a whole other level when you actually act on it. And I've been in, in situations with partners in the past when I, we said we were open and then we acted on it and then it kind of just like fucked our relationship. Like it was like, we said we were okay with it, but in reality it actually wasn't. And I've had a lot of men, um, yeah, just like make me feel or like try and put on me this like, you know, you're dirty or like like you're used damaged goods now if you've like mess if you've played with other people after we've gotten together. And so for me it was like this one is program in my head of like do I do I actually want to play with other men? And I was like, Yes, I do. But then this like is it gonna basically like is it gonna hurt the love that Faraday and I have together or is he gonna view me differently? And so this play party, we already t had talked about it. So we shared with the group, like, yeah, we want to flow together at the beginning. And then we're, we're just open flow with everyone else. And of course, like, we'll check in with each other and throughout the night if it's okay. Um, but I wasn't really sure how it was going to go. You know, this is like, there were so many things this weekend where I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. And this is like really stepping into the unknown. But this is what I signed up for. I'm like super excited to be exploring my sexuality in this way and also exploring this with Faraday. And then we had people step in if like they were in a partnership, but their partner wasn't there and like speak if anything, if the group needed to let, if they wanted to let the group know anything. And then Faraday and Eve split the groups into like men and women. So the men went into the bedroom, closed the door. They had like a men's circle and like shared different things. And then Eve had the women like split off into groups of three and like share, you know, any insecurities they had or anything that they wanted to just be seen in and like how they were showing up tonight at the at the event and then she had us do like a big group hug like all the women love the sharing circle and, and then we did a big group hug with all the women and I gave them like a little pep talk of like allowing themselves to receive pleasure and how it's such a like a rebellious act for us as women to allow ourselves to step into our sexual power because we have had society really really suppress that <clears throat> and our culture and like all of this programming that we have from everywhere just saying that you know, we shouldn't allow ourselves to receive pleasure. And also to like, and to really like claim it, you know, and, and to really like step into our power. Um, and a point that I love that Eve um, shared with the women was that like, a lot of times women are, we feel like super nervous to be at these sexual spaces with men. Um, because, you know, like women, it's just like, am I safe? You know, like, is this a safe space? Like, are men going to be f too aggressive or forward or whatever? And Eve shared a really good point. She was like, we have, you know, picked really amazing men here tonight. And to know that like a lot of the programming, programming that men have is to be perfect at performing. Like men have this programming in society that like they need to do do everything perfect in the bedroom, know exactly how to pleasure a woman, like know how to do everything on point, and that that they're actually a lot of them are super nervous to be here because they don't know how it's gonna go, they don't know who they're gonna meet, and it's a co-creation that we are creating together. And so she was like, you know, like like empower yourselves to speak your desire and to flow with it, and don't just like lay there and like let have the guy be in charge of everything that's happening it's like we are all playing together like we're all little kids here playing together and to know that they are actually probably really nervous to play with you guys <laughs> um, and also because they're super sexy women and I'm like I just love I love everything that's happening and it felt so nice to be in the circle of women and and to really like to be like this is the sisterhood like we all are all like looking out for each other and um, showing up for each other and like yes being seen in like this journey that we're on um and then we brought everyone else back into the groups together like guys and girls and we did one more game where we had everyone like sit down and like drop in and like i was like okay here's your invitation to get the party started because usually it's like this i've noticed that play parties like we have all these facilitated games and everyone like wants permission to connect to each other and like 
but then when it goes into like we call it the open play where it's just like okay now it's a party now it's like your turn to do stuff it's like a lot of people just freeze or like run to go make some tea or eat something because they're just feeling awkward and so I was like how can I drop them in and give them permission to start playing and so me being direct I was just like okay so this is your time to play and like everyone was sitting in one big group and I'm like um you know just turn to someone next to you and like ask like even if you even just say like can I hold your hand or like how are you doing like start connecting and a really great way to start the party is uh, you know ask each other like, do you want a massage it can be just like yes but I want a massage just on my shoulders or whatever you know like, it doesn't need to lead to anything sexual it's just like a way to connect and people really just went for it they were like yep and they just started connecting like offering each other massages I saw a couple people just holding hands talking for a while and it was just such a cozy vibe. I had a lot of people tell me like, wow, I feel so at home here. And like, thank you for inviting me into your home and being so like down to earth and open and like, um, and just, yeah, just like the party itself, it, f- it felt like in the, in the main room where we had like three or four mattresses in the main living room area, it was like everyone like cuddling and like laughing and connecting and like you know slowly like dropping into a more like sensual sexual space we turned the lights off we had a bunch of candles like really nice like um vibey like slow sexy music and then in the ma- bedroom was more like where people were like giving each other massage like yoni massages and like kind of going more sexual Um, And then there was always like at least two people in the bathtub, if not more. And um, because we only had one bathtub, like this is another funny thing is that the remote collective in my community space in Thailand, we have three bathrooms. One is just a little bathroom where people just go to the bathroom. One is a bathroom with a bathtub and one is a bathroom with a shower. Um, And so this was the first time me hosting a play party where it was like, we just have one bathroom. So I don't know how this is going to go. Again, I have no clue how this is going to go. And it ended up being so funny because like everyone showed up and almost everyone didn't know each other and by the end of the night there was always two people in the bathtub with like the shower curtain you know pulled across and one person going pee and like whenever someone was going pee they would just like be talking to the people through the shower curtain in the bathtub and everyone's like laughing and just connecting and vibing and it became it just felt like this home like home family vibes but we're all being sexy with each other and that was really nice and um yeah, so my own experience, like, first I was in full, like, hosting mode because, again, like, moving the party to our house and, um, like, it was just a lot for me emotionally to, because I was just also, like, how is this going to work? Like, the play parties in Thailand, it's, like, I've done them so many times that I know exactly how everything works. I know how to set up the house. I know how to do everything. And so there's less on, like, my nervous system, whereas this one was, like, I have no clue how this is going to go. I have no clue how this is going to go. I, like it was just a lot. And so when everything was working out and everyone was flowing, everyone was having an amazing time. I was like, finally like, whew, okay, I can drop into my body. But that doesn't mean like, I wasn't feeling super sexual at first. I was like, and also I think, like, yeah, I was facing my own programming of like, do I, is it still okay for me to be sexual? You know? And, um, Faraday was like offering anyone who wanted massages. So he ended up like giving a couple women massages and I was like checking on him and just making sure he was okay. And like also checking in with myself, like, am I okay with him being with other women? And what I realized was like, yeah, I'm okay with him being with other women as long as it feels like, you know, he's like honoring, like, I'm like, I want you, I'm like protective of the sisters, you know, I'm like, I want you to honor them and make sure they're okay. And I could tell he really was, he was like giving them like massages and like really, you know, like, like just, I could feel the energy and it was really good. And like, they were all having a good time. But then I was checking with myself. I'm like, how do I feel about him connecting with other people? And I was like, I'm happy for him. I'm happy that he's having this experience. But then this, my inner child in me was like, I want to play too, you know? And so I was like, okay, even though I'm not feeling quite sexual, like I'm going to start like talking to people and like dropping in. So I connected to a couple of the guys and like, I just opened up at first. I was just like, this is, um, um, this is like where I'm at. Like I haven't connected with anyone since we've gotten together. And like they were, I was having some really good conversations and people were just so open and like, so down to earth. And like people I actually want to hang out with in real life. Like I was like, wow, I'm making friends here and this is really nice. And they were just so receptive to everything I was saying. And we were just having a good time. And 
you know, one thing leads to another and I'm like making out and like rolling around in the living room and having fun. Um, and so I did that with a couple of the men there and they were really lovely and I really liked connecting with them. But, you know, I, my, how do I put this? My like sexual like connection, um, desires were not, not necessarily filled at this point. I was like, this is great. I had fun. I'm happy that I'm connecting with people, but I wasn't necessarily like, you know, hot and bothered over any of them. And, um, and then there was one guy who, from the moment he came in, I was like, oof, you know, like, I'm like, he's very sexy. And I felt like he matches a lot of the boxes of like, what is attractive to me, like someone who I could tell has good style is very like, just hot. But also I started talking to him a little bit in the beginning and he, you know, he's like very intellectual and very grounded and, and has, and he has really good energy. Like he was like really positive and just like a cool Berliner guy. And, um, to the, like I, I, I was attracted to him to the point where like I was avoiding him in the party and we were like making eye contact whenever we were both in the kitchen and I was just like, mm, I'm going to go over here and make some tea. And like, you know, I know that when I really like someone is when I avoid them. It's like my inner child gets shy, which does not happen very often. And it means that I actually like someone. And this is also what I did with Faraday in the beginning. I kind of just like avoided him. He did that with me as well. Like I think sometimes like, and I don't get nervous around anyone anymore, but I still have like, you know, you still always have like your inner child reactions. Um, so Hold on, the sun is really strong for me. So I'm going to, I'm just trying to like move. One sec. Um, I think this is okay. Um, so anyways, <laughs> I finally was like, like I kept checking on Faraday and he was like connecting with this one woman like a really long time. And I was just like feeling a little bit lonely. Like I was like, okay, I'm, I've had some nice times with people, but I don't like... I don't want to have this be the same as the last play party where he had some really nice connections and I didn't really connect with anyone like on a, a level where I was like, yes, I want to sleep with you. Like, you know, like with the person like, or like a soul connection where I was like, I'm so happy we met and like, we're going to be friends, like even outside of this. So I got my little courage up and I decided to speak to this guy. So I just kind of like, stood next to him in the kitchen I was making some tea and I was like started chatting and then you know got starting to get to know him and we had uh, like we started connecting like even more and more and I was like oh do you want to sit down because I was just tired of standing in the kitchen and then we sat down and we started talking more and we were just like connecting out he was sharing about he's in a partnership and I am also you know he was sharing about his relationship I was sharing my relationship and we we're talking about like open open relationships and it was just like so nice to like, talk to someone who was in a similar situation than me, but has been with his partner a lot mo longer. So I felt like I was like learning some stuff from his situation and we were just connecting. I could just tell that like, okay, our energy was building. We were like vibing more and more. And then eventually he's like, can I kiss you? And I'm like, yeah, actually. And we had sat down. So he has this small, like one person trampoline and we'd put like blankets over it and made it cozy, but it, like we were sitting on a trampoline. So him and I start making out on the trampoline and then eventually we like roll onto the floor and we're just like going for it and like having such a nice time. And then I was like, um, I wanted to be on a bed because my back was like not feeling, I wasn't feeling cozy in the situation that we were in. So I was like, can we go into the bedroom? So we went into the bedroom and right before I started talking to him, it was like midnight and we had told everyone that we were going to end the party at two and so then, I, you know, we, him and I were talking for a little bit and then we like going into our experience where we're connecting like physically, sexually. And it was so good that I like I lost track of time. And like him and I, he was like, it was just really, let's just say it's really, really good. All of it, all of it was so yummy that and then like Eve finally comes over and she's like, Brittany, um, I just want to let you know we're like going to, Faraday wants to close the party because it's like past two, it's like 2.30 and you know we're trying to like get people out because Faraday's tired like we're tired we want to go to bed and I was like oh my god like over two hours have gone by and I'm still I was like still like going forward with this guy and we just connected so nicely and it was just like a soul connection you know and 
And then so we started wrapping, like, you know, slowing down what we were doing. And then we went out in the living room. We had some tea. We we're still cuddling and just like, you know, he invited me out to lunch and we were going to keep chatting and like talking more. And it was just so nice. And I was like, ah, like my inner child was like, yay, I got to play and like really connect to someone. And like, I felt like someone I actually was super attracted to, like, in all ways, like, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally, and like energetically, it like fit all the boxes. Um, so I felt really free. I was like, wow, yeah, I am free, you know, and then to, so, so that was like such a big deal for me. Like Faraday and I, you know, we brush our teeth. He went to bed. The kids, um, Carl and Eve stayed the night. They slept in the living room. We, you know, they all cleaned up and, and then I was just like, okay, I really want to sit with this. And so I went out and like meditated, did some rape on our, <laughs> we have like scaffolding because we're doing construction on our building. We made like a little balcony, like a, like a, um, anyways, I sat out on the scaffolding and lit a candle and did some rape and like just meditated and grounded and allowed myself to process the experience. And, um, and it was just so nice. I was like reflecting like, wow, I really feel like I am free. Like I'm so happy with this experience and I'm so happy. Sorry, I'm just moving because I am definitely in the sun. Um, I'm just so happy that like it worked out and everyone came and like <laughs> I was just like laughing at like how every single moment throughout the night I was just like, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to work out. I don't know. And then just, I just kept trusting the universe, kept following the synchronicity, following the flow and like things just, things just kept working out. And, and so, um, the next day, um, you know, Fred and I were connecting and talking and we were just like checking in with our relationship. We were just like, how do we feel about everything? Because, It's one thing to say you're open and free, but I don't see that many couples acting on it and still having this like really firm foundation of like, I love you. I choose to build a life together. Like you are free and like happy for you to receive pleasure and go for it. Like you're doing amazing and really believe it and like live it, you know? So we we had a conversation about it and and he was saying like yeah you know it was the first time that me seeing you with someone and he's like it took like you know you have this moment of like 15 to 20 seconds where you're like how does my body actually feel about this like am i am i really okay with this and he was like i was i was okay with i was okay with you playing with someone else and i was so happy that you were having fun like that was and he was like i was just wanting to make sure that he was treating you well and you know like just feeling protective over you and wanting to make sure you're okay but he was like I was also noticing that my body like at the end of the night didn't want to didn't want to connect with you at first like it was like he's like I just didn't want to touch you and I told him I said this is programming like this is how I felt at the end of the last play party um, back in December when we were when we when we did it and he had connected with like you know nine women or more and I felt that I was just kind of I felt kind of like grossed out by the situation and I it was this program of just like just felt like kind of like like he had done something dirty and I didn't want him to really like touch me or be around him and that was that was just programming that I had and in that moment in last December when this happened I remember this because like everything is so like goes back and forth like karma is you know like whatever you believe it fulfills itself and the the boyfriend I had before Ferdy is I had I was dating this boyfriend his name's Andy um while I started the play parties and he said that he was okay with them and then when we actually were hosting the play party he said he was not okay with me playing with anyone and I just remember yeah this feeling of like not being free and with Faraday like in December when we had this last play party I was like I choose for us to both be free and I knew there was this moment where I was like I can act like how Andy did in the last relationship and be upset and like you know say I'm okay with openness but not actually okay with it or I can like choose to really live what I believe 
and I believe that I'm good and within myself. I love myself unconditionally and I love my partner unconditionally. And there's nothing that them being with someone else is going to take away from that. You know, as long as they're honoring the experience and being trustworthy and like doing it all in a way that's protecting my heart, which Verity did. Like we had, you know, we, he had checked in with me at the last play party and we had decided it was okay for us to flow with other people, but I still like had this, these feelings about it. Um, and there was other reasons why the last one, but, um, but the main thing was that at the end of the party, I had this moment where I was like, I could use this as a situation where I'm upset I have this programming, these beliefs, and I disconnect from him, or I could say fuck it to that that programming and and choose to have it be an opportunity where we reconnect. So at the last one in December, when he had flowed with all these women, I told him I I was like I'm really upset at you. I'm upset at everything. I just this, these are my feelings. I have to honor them, and also I want to have sex with you. Like I want to. I'm choosing to reconnect and like make love right now, and we did, and it was like the best thing that we could have done. And we both felt so good about it. And and so I reminded him of that when we talked yesterday uh, about the play party. I was like, remember how you, you know, like all that stuff happened at the last play party. And I was the one who was feeling kind of like grossed out by everything and didn't like what had happened. Or, you know, it just my body was having a reaction. Um, but I chose to reconnect and have the opportunity to you know, have it be something that brings us together. And he was like, I know you're right. And totally like, he's like, our net, our rule for like the next play party is right after we have the play party, even if we're too tired to like talk. And cause he was like, I was just too tired to bring all of this up. But he's like, now I know that we can just make love and then process it all the next day. And I was like, yeah, I think this is so important. Like, or if, especially if we're flowing with other people and people that we really like are connecting with and we, we feel juicy with, I want it to be at the end of the day that we connect with each other. And even if we're too tired to talk, we just reconnect physically and like let our bodies connect, our energies connect and like basically choose each other again and like claim each other in that experience. Um, so this is what we're going to do in the future, but it was just really nice to talk about that. And another thing too, he was saying, he was like, I had so much fun, like making these women feel safe that he connected with and, and like just creating like a really positive experience for them. Like a, you know, like a memory that they can have, like this was a positive touch point that I have in my sexuality at this play party with Faraday. And he's like, I'm just really happy that I could like make them feel empowered in their sexuality but he was like, I, some of the stuff I was doing with them, I was like, I haven't done this with Brittany yet. And I, he's like, I want to make sure that everything we're doing with other people, we are each other's first. And like, we are doing this with each other first. And, you know, we're having this experience together. And like, you are my main person that I have my sexual experiences with, even if I'm playing with other people. And I was like, I love that. I love that we are like making each other the priority and like making each other, you know, our home base and connecting with each other first. And I told him that like me connecting with other men just made me appreciate him even more in like many different ways. And it just makes me feel free because like my inner child's like I can play and I can fall in love with other people, but it doesn't, it has, there's nothing that's going to compare to the love that I have with Faraday and the life that we have together and all the beautiful things that we build together and our energy, our love that we have for each other. And and something that he said that was really beautiful, he, it's, he was like, you know, I really believe that you are my twin flame. And like, I really believe that like the universe brought us together and like, you are my person. And he's like, and it took me 30 years to find you. And like, I cherish like every single moment that we have together. And I want to make sure that we are choosing every moment to have it be something that's connecting us together. And that we're like, just celebrating it and like having so much fun with it and I was crying and I was just like yeah I love you too and I was realizing like how much because of me being hurt in the past by different situations I love Faraday so much that sometimes it's hard for me to allow myself to open up to him about that because in the past I've done this with other other men that I thought were going to be like my life partners and it just didn't work out you know and with Faraday, it's like, it's not even a question. Like he is my person. Like I, I, I'm choosing to spend the rest of my life with him. I love him. We have so much fun together. We just like, we are each other's other halves. Um, and it, but it's just like, 
I'm just so grateful to also have, and this is also why I know he's my other half is because, you know, I've had people in the past where I thought that they were my person, but they weren't able to express their love in the same way that I was. Like I, and with Faraday, like if anything, sometimes he's more expressive of his love and his emotions than me because he just loves me so much. And I think for me, I'm like, sometimes I love him so much that it scares me to share because I'm like, I don't want to be quote unquote too much. And Faraday never worries about that. He's just like, I don't care. This is who I am. And I'm like, it's helping me to build my own trust in him and in myself that I can open up fully and unfold into this love and, and allow myself to express my love to him even more. And there's situations like this that, that really build that trust and build that, you know, that space to express my love so yeah it was a crazy weekend like um I I'm really grateful for all of it and I am so excited so we talked about it and we were like maybe this was the universe showing us that the best place in Berlin at least to host these parties is in our house because he was saying he's like yeah the play parties that you did in thailand they were nice but like it was definitely like a party vibe you know like it was a lot of people we had had like 45 to 60 people every time and you know there's only so many people you can connect with in one night and he was like i would rather have it be like less people like you know 25 to 35 people but have it be like really vibey people where like everyone actually wants to hang out afterwards and i'm not saying this still happened in thailand but like this is even more so like like these are like people who I'm like yeah you are amazing like I I I'm so happy you exist in the world and I'm so excited to connect with you you know sensually sexually and also on a friendship level so we are exploring the idea of doing them like every couple weeks here while we're in Berlin because it's also it's just super easy it's like at our house and um and it's super vibey and fun and we had so many people say I would love to come to the next one and um I think it just energetically feels a lot easier in my body and feels better in my body to um, like host them at our at our our place because then I can just there's no like external factors I need to worry about when it comes to renting a space and lining up with their dates. It's just like okay, we're feeling like um, in flow to host it at this day. Uh, let's see how many people sign up. There's tons of people coming in. Um, in June and July that want to come and it's a lot more people that we're connecting with now we're like rebuilding the community and more people are coming back from Thailand and Asia who were our community out there so it is growing Um, our meetup group that we have here for Berlin has over I think 550 people in it now and it keeps growing every single day so yeah it just feels really good and I'm really excited to invite you guys to the next one. Um, and we had a lot of people come from out of town. Um, so if you're in Europe anywhere um, and you want to come to one, let me know. I can send you. We're going to start planning out the dates um, for the next couple ones. And you can come in for it. And yeah, with Faraday, it just feels so nice because I, I really can authentically say that we are living our truth of being chosen and free. Like we are, we completely choose each other. We love each other so much. We are being brave enough to com- completely open our hearts to each other and express that love to, oursel- to ourselves, to each other, and to the world. And also we're allowing ourselves to be free in our sexuality and to allow ourselves to play with other people. You know, like, I just think it's so funny when people lock themselves into monogamy because you can't, just because you make a decision, like, okay, we're not going to ever be with other people or like other people it's like you don't know who you're going to meet tomorrow you don't know what the universe is going to flow into your life here or that there and it's like why would you lock yourself down like also you can't control that so it's like you're making this arbitrary decision and you have no clue and why would you close yourself off to more love but like what i really want to point out is like how much we are protecting each other's hearts in this experience it's not like okay we're chosen and free like go you know you can go f- sleep with that person i'm just and i don't care what you're th- it's like we made the decision in the beginning of the play party like if at any moment one of us doesn't feel safe we can check in with the other person and say like i want to change it and just only flow together like we always had this kind of veto of whenever we you know if we really 
needed to have that space with each other and needed to feel safe. So like safety, protecting each other's hearts was the first thing. And I really felt that with him. And I know he felt that with me. And at the same time, we wanted to create this experience where we could flow with other people and feel safe to do that, knowing that we can come home to each other. So it's like knowing that we are each other's home base. I think that's a really important thing. So I still believe, and I will always say that I feel like Re, you know, claiming your sexuality and allowing yourselves to to feel in your power, in your sexuality, empowered in, sexu- in your sexuality, it's one of the re- most rebellious things you can do in today's world because it's connected to all of your other creative life force and connected to everything in your life. And I am committed to keep doing this and keep creating situations where we can be empowered in our sexuality and our sensuality and also really dropped into tribe like I feel like the people that I met this weekend and the people that are in our community already are people that are on the next level of building this new earth with us you know because it's a vibration it's like people who want to create a better earth are you know into sustainability are vegan um and also are free and expressive in their sexuality. Like this, basically like these are, this is me. And then like, these are people that are like-minded souls and I'm so excited to meet more of them and to bring more of us together. And I'm really excited because this weekend I'm feeling the momentum of building, um, building the community here in Berlin because this weekend I got invited to, I have this vision to make something called the house of pleasure. And it's like a physical space here in Berlin where, Um, We can do the play parties, we can do workshops like Tantra workshops and different immersive experiences around our sexuality. And so it's called the House of Pleasure in my vision. I've shared about it a couple of times on my podcast and it's happening, it's building. And this weekend I got invited to um, be the facilitator for the Pleasure Loft at a private festival in a castle. So it was like 350 people, mostly like Burning Man people. Um, like who are coming from all over the world to go to this festival and there's one of the rooms they're calling it the pleasure loft and I'm hosting play parties in there throughout the weekends and I'm just like what is my life like I'm so grateful for my reality and I'm so grateful for this timeline and I'm so grateful for everything that's here and everything that's coming and so yeah sending you guys some of this love and stay stay tuned you can follow me on my Instagram at Brittany Bond to um, keep updated on the, the future play parties and also check out Faraday's podcast because he just recorded one in German so if you're German speaking um, you can hear his experience and his version of the play party um, for the from his podcast um, at V Gains V-E-G-A-I-N-S um, so yeah that's it for now uh, just sending you lots of this sexual juicy energy <laughs> And I hope that you do whatever you need to do to be feeling empowered and juicy and sexy and free. (laughs) Okay. Love you. Bye.